So now let's look at some examples of using natural logs and e in order to solve exponential equations. So in this case, we're asked to solve for x. Here we have e to the x equals 5. It's like we want to get x on its own. If you remember what happens with the rules of natural logs and e, they undo each other. In other words, if I want to get rid of e to the x, I do natural log of it. Now I have to do it to both sides then, so natural log of e to the x that will be equal to the natural log of 5. And that, then, I can use this rule that natural log and e, they undo each other. So I'll just get x equals natural log of 5. Now this is the exact answer, but if I wanted it to five, uh, two decimal places, then I'll actually do that. So I'll just calculate this. So the natural log of 5 is just 1.61 in that case, if I want two decimal places. So x equals approximately 1.61. Isn't that easy? There's not really much to it in that case. You just have to be careful about uh, your rules. So let's do another one then. This looks more complicated. Solve for x. We have 25e to the minus 0.1x equals 4. We want to get x on its own. Well, I don't want to take the natural log of both sides yet because that's going to complicate things because I have something times something else. So what I maybe want to do is simplify this a bit. So I'm going to keep the e to the minus 0.1x and I'm going to divide the 25 over. So it's going to be 4 over 25. And that's what I'm going to do there. And then what I can do, of course, is say, well, what does that give me? That's approximately, well, that is actually equal to 0.16. So what I'm going to do then is... Um, Maybe I'll rewrite that, so e to the minus 0.1x. And if you're not sure, you can always do it on your calculator. 4 divided by 25, 0.16. So if that's the case, well then here I go, 0.16. Now I want to get rid of the e. So again, I take natural log of both sides, so natural log of e to the minus 0.1x equals natural log of 0.16. Now these undo each other, so now I have 0.1x equals natural log, or ln, of 0 0.16. I want x by itself, so the last step I need to do is divide both sides by negative 0 0.1. Well, dividing by negative means the top becomes negative, so it's going to be negative ln of 0 0.16. Divide that by 0 0.1. So let's see what we get here. So if I do natural log of 0 0.16, calculate that, I get this answer, which is a negative. Well, a negative times a negative gives me a positive, right? So I'm going to multiply that sort of by, you know, by negative 1. Oops. I'm going to say answer times negative 1, just to show you, of course, you get a positive. Yes. I take that answer and divide it by 0 0.1, and I get 18.33, let's see, because I want to two decimal places. Because this is what it exactly is. This is the exact value. But if I want it to two decimal places, then it's approximately 18.33. That's it. That's how you work with these. But I wanted to give you another example. So this is going to be an example, this time from something in physics. Now, you don't have to be a physicist to understand this. Because I'm going to show you a derivation that some physics people find hard, but it's nothing but using math and using exponential and logs. So let's do an example with uh, radioactivity. So this is something from physics here. So if something is radioactive, let's look at this, what this means. This is some sort of particle where given enough time, it sort of, you get less of it. That's because it's sort of making other things. It's emitting things like alpha and beta and gamma sort of particles. Um, and alphas are just uh, helium-4, uh, beta particles are just um, electrons or positrons, and gamma particles are just light. Now that's not really so important. What's important with radioactivity is this. The fact that at some certain time, and let's say you start off with a certain amount, that's what n is going to represent here. n is going to be sort of the amount, this could be a mass, or it's the amount of material after a certain time. That's what n is going to represent. So what we'll do is, let's say at some certain time t, let's say at, at an initial time we have this amount. We have some sort of, maybe this is a mass of particles. Maybe we have like one kilogram of this stuff, this radioactive material. It could be like uranium, or it could be something less exotic like, I don't know, potassium-40 or sodium-22. Those are things we have in our own bodies. Did you know, by the way, that we're radioactive? 
In other words, if you sort of you hold up a Geiger counter, something that can actually measure radioactivity, you put it over you, and you're actually radioactive because you're made of some of these radioactive compounds. Now, there's no reason to freak out. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly natural. So let's say you start off with, uh, at some initial time, you have some initial amount of stuff. What happens then, we say this is, we say it's uh, a process that's actually exponential. So in this case right here, it's actually a negative exponential, which means it's something that goes down and then goes like this right here. It goes infinitely close to zero. It doesn't go back up, by the way. I just want to, I don't want that curve to look like it curves back up. It goes infinitely close to zero. So what this really means then is that at some certain time here, you've got 100% of whatever you're looking for. Now, there exists a time when you have 50% of what you started with. And that time is going to be represented by, well, if I go over here, I don't think I've drawn it absolutely correctly, but see this, you know, the time to have half of it, while I go over here, while I meet the graph, I go down. That right there is what we call T1 half. So that's what we call, that's called the half life. So that equals the time to get one half the original amount. In other words, whatever you started with. And by the way, N0, that's the original amount. That's what you start with. That's the original amount. In other words, that's at t equals 0. So at time t equals 0, you have your initial amount. And of course, after a certain time has elapsed, you've gone down by half. And of course, get that same time again. Let's say we go that same exact time, we go down again. So this right here would be 2t 1 half. That would be this, and now you'd have 25% of what you started off with. And so on, you can go down and down and down. Now an interesting question could be, do you ever reach zero? No, you always get infinitely close. You take half and then divide that by two, and divide that by two, and divide that by two. You never quite reach zero, but you get really, really close to it. Now why in the world am I using this example? That's because we have an equation. We're going to define something else. We're going to define t is going to be the time elapsed, and we're going to define something as lambda called the decay constant. It turns out this just tells you the probability of this whatever thing is uh, of decaying each second. So we call that a decay constant. We write lambda for it. By the way, if you've ever seen the, the old video game Half-Life, I don't know if you ever heard of that game. I used to love playing that game because, of course, um, well, it was a scary game. It came out years ago, though. But you actually played a physicist, so I really liked that one. And it turns out the symbol for the game Half-Life is this symbol here, this lambda. That actually has to do with radioactivity, so good work. Now let's actually deal with this equation. We have an equation that goes n equals n0 e to the minus lambda t. This is the equation that governs radioactivity. So This tells you that some initial amount you start with, this is the final amount, well, this what this tells you then is given an initial amount and given a time elapsed and given what the decay constant is, you can figure out how, mu how much you have left at a certain time. But the reason I am showing you this, now I've explained a bit of physics for you, but the reason I'm showing this is a derivation that a physicist would like to do is to actually calculate the equation for t one half. In other words, what if we set t equal to t one half. So by definition, if we set the time elapsed to be the half-life, what does that mean? Well, that means the amount of material you have is going to be precisely half the original amount. So I'm going to say one half the original amount. This is the only sort of physics-y thing you have to do. So now let's just do some math. In other words, now let's replace this equation with these two things here. So everywhere you see a t, you put in t one half. That's the half-life. Everywhere you see n, you put in half n zero. And let's actually calculate t. Let's solve for t one half here. So let's look at this. So we have instead of n, I write it as one half of n zero. That equals n zero e to the minus lambda. And instead of t, we're writing it as t one half. That's the half life. All right, well, the n zeros cancel out. That's nice. So now I have one half equals e to the minus lambda t one half. Well, if I look at this, then I want to get rid of the e, because, see, I'm trying to solve for t one half here. So how do I get rid of an e? Take the ln of both sides, the natural log. So natural log of 1 over 2 equals the natural log of e to the minus lambda t one half. Of course, this natural log and e, they undo each other. So now I'm left with 
Maybe I'll do this on the right here. So that leads to, uh, and of course I can use my rules of natural logs. Natural log of 1 over 2 is the same thing as natural log of 1 minus natural log of 2. So see, I'm using all these tricks we've just learned. That equals just minus lambda t 1 half, because these just drop down because these undo each other. Now natural log of 1, you might want to think about that. Natural log of 1, what does that really mean? That's like saying the log base e of 1, because that's the definition of natural log. What this tells you is e to the power of what equals 1. That's what we're sort of looking for. What's, what's this x value? What, what do you have to make e to the power of to make it 1? And in that case, you actually should see that, well, if I make it 0, it's the only thing I can do. e to the power of 0 is the only thing that can give me 1, which means this cancels out. If you're not sure, you can always try it on a calculator, of course. You can say natural log of 1. It's 0. So that cancels out. So now I'm left with just minus la, uh, ln 2 equals minus lambda t 1 half. Well, I can multiply both sides by positive. So that means I can, or sorry, multiply both sides by negative, you can say. So that just changes the sign, so that's easy. So the negatives just disappeared. Only because I can do that to both sides was that useful. And now I want to solve for t1 half, the half-life. So I get t1 half equals ln2 divided by lambda. This is a derivation that a physicist might have trouble with. But you see, with your math skills, we can totally do something like this. This actually tells you how the half-life is related to the decay constant. So if you're told you have a decay constant of blah, 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 uh, it turns out it has units of uh, seconds to the minus 1, then you can actually figure out what the half-life is. Now you might think, why in the world is that helpful? Well, you might want to calculate this stuff and calculate the half-life or use the half-life in order to calculate things because what you might want to do, uh, maybe you want to use radioactivity for something good. I mean, people think radioactivity is always bad, but it's not. What if you want to take a picture inside your stomach, let's just say? Um, if you want to try to do that, let's say, so this is right here, this is the person, and um, you know, this is you, this is your head, and there's your hair, I guess. You can see why I'm not an artist. So this person right here, let's say we want to take a picture inside their stomach here. So if we're looking at this, we want to see in here. Now the problem is if you do an x-ray or some sort of imaging, it's very difficult to actually see your stomach because, of course, the x-rays, they, they go right through most of your body and bounce only off of um, bones and things like that. So it's very difficult. So you might want what's called a contrast agent. This is what uh, doctors do. So if they want to take what's called like a CT scan, that's computerized tomography, sometimes what they want to do is they want to use a contrast agent. That means they have you, let's say, you swallow something. So maybe you um, drink a shake, um, and it actually contains a radioactive material. But you want to drink something that has a very small half-life. In other words, you want to drink something that doesn't take long before it has half the original amount. Because, of course, again, another half-life, you have even half of that. Another half-life, you have half of that. So you might drink, for example, something that has barium, for example. That has a short half-life. It could be on the order of you know seconds or minutes, so something not too bad. So you would drink this. What this stuff does, though, is when you take your picture, it basically allows then the picture to sort of bounce off your intestines. So now you can actually take a picture of your insides, your intestines. But you want to drink this contrast agent that has a short half-life. Um, and sometimes you have things with really long half-life. So for example, something like uh, uranium. And we actually call it uranium-238, for example. Uranium-235, we can say. Um, some of these, you know, sort of nasty byproducts of nuclear uh, weapons or even nuclear power plants, although we can have good things from power plants, the result, though, is you have these, these products that are made with really long half-life. Sometimes a half-life is millions or billions of years, which means it stays very radioactive for a very long time. So radioactivity can be something very crucial to our own lives, both good and bad. Right? You can have good radioactivity, like if you want to take a picture of your insides, well then you just drink something that's radioactive, but you just have something that has a short half-life. Then you can take your picture, and then it doesn't take long before this stuff sort of just works its way out of your system because it doesn't exist for very long. So I thought that was a nice example, although it's sort of physics-y knowing these things are here, but let's just say you looked at this equation. You were told to replace t with t one half and n as half n zero. This part is just pure math in order to derive the equation for how the half-life is related to the decay constant. 
So I think that's a good example of showing how we can use uh, exponential equations. And that shows how we can use ln and e.